We need to get a little closer. About like this. That way we Charlie's the director. We gotta listen to him. Okay. Is that, is that, are, you, are you happy with that? All right, yeah. I, li I like the, the scene, yeah. Okay, good. It's good. What's behind us, Charlie? Huh? What's behind us? The Big B -X Expo. <laughs> All, right, All right, I guess we're ready, huh? Okay. Hit we're it, ready. Ralph. All right. Wreck it, Ralph. No, no. Oh, Wreck it, Ralph. Thanks for watching. No, stop we'll that, Charlie. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Hello, Wreck it, Ralph here. And good time, no, Charlie. No, no, no. Hello, on, good time, Charlie. This is good time, Charlie. No, no. Hey, hey, this is Wreck it, Ralph. Hit, hit it, number two. Let's go. All right, Wreck-It Ralph here. Oh my gosh, you guys. Come on, man. Oh, so you gotta say hello, Mr. Wreck-It Ralph. Hello, this is Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, that's yeah. right. There you go. That's right. So that's Charlie. You can say hello. Hello, good time, Charlie. Okay. Go ahead. Hit it. Hello, Wreck-It Ralph here. Hello, good time, Charlie here. No, it's Mr. Ed here with the other two amigos, and we're here in Kentucky at the... Come on, you gotta turn around and look. North American Honey Bee Expo in, in Louisville, Kentucky. And today, well, there's like only about 3,000 people in here. We got a couple of people standing around. But today we're gonna go inside of the expo hall and we are going to, what are we gonna do, Charlie? We're gonna go look at bee paraphernalia. No, Charlie. And equipment. Uh, and and equipment. What, what specifically? And bottle loose. And bottle There you go. And warmers. And warmers. So the video today is we're going to go in there and we're going to talk to a few of the vendors in there about their heated bottlers. That's what we're really going to do about this video. So Charlie is going to be manning the, the camera. Ralph is going to be manning the, the crowd control. Hopefully. And, and then I'm going to be like trying to see if I can ask the people questions about it so that you can have a little bit informed about the uh, bottlers that we're getting ready to look at. So, y'all ready? I'm ready. I've well, been ready. By the grace of God, we're going to get in there and not get mobbed because it's hard to walk 10 feet in there and we're going to get this job there is done. A lot of we're going to try to get it done. Let's get inside, guys. Let's do so, it. Right now, we are now with Dancing Bee Equipment. And we got Todd. Callis. <laughs> Callis, um, who is the, the head boss man of this operation. He knows all the things there is to know about anything that we see here. And he says, ask him any questions and he will I, not yeah, stop I have him. all the answers. Yeah, he's got all the answers. <laughs> so the first thing i like to do, Todd, is ask you, where, where are y'all based out of and why did you come to the expo? So we do our manufacturing in Ontario, uh, north of the border. Is that, in, is that in Canada? That would be in Canada. <laughs> so you're not American? One of, the, one, of the, one of the provinces in Canada. No, I'm real. <laughs> so in Canada, yeah, so we traveled here because, well, obviously there's nothing available like this in Canada. This trade show is fantastic. It's, in my mind, one of a kind. It's like, it feels really good to be a beekeeper and see the amount of people out here showing up for it, you know? Awesome. So it makes yeah. the industry feel alive and awesome to me. So that's why we're here. And also to hopefully sell some stainless steel manufacturing stuff that we design. I'm a beekeeper myself. I run about 1,200 colonies. And so anything here that's... Everything that we've brought pretty well here is something that we've made ourselves. Like, for example, well, we're not talking about nuke boxes here, but, you know, with cardboard nuke box, everything we're manufacturing. You know, the stainless, what we saw was there was, I thought, a little bit of lack in the market on the quality that I wanted to see and what we're doing. So we started manufacturing in stainless. So manufacture the valve, uh, everything is laser, cleaned up after. Little, we've made like little innovations that I think are very useful. So when you see a lot of other tanks, the lids never quite sit nice and flat, or over time you have where there's a gap, you know? And so ours, we've designed a hinge, so you can easily look inside, check it, and so things like that. Uh, other tanks will take the lid off, you know, how do you get the hose there? So we have just a little port there where you can have your hose, pump hose going in. Uh, so little innovations like that we've made. So let, let me ask oh. you about your your heating element because this really I so want to focus on. So heating element is uh, uh, Permalux. That's we don't manufacture the heating element. Obviously, it's uh, made in the U.S. So uh -huh. it's a U.S. made uh, heating element. In fact, that's actually used on a, a bunch of the uh, uh, um, uh, bottlers around here. Yeah. So we prefer that heater. We find that heater is a longer lasting one than the. Uh, there's a red one. I'm not going to say names of manufacturer, but we find that one is will last longer. Uh -huh. So we've been like. Being in the industry and you know having bottled honey my whole life, we find that you know we know which ones after you know five six years are still around, which aren't. Those seem to last the longest, so that's why it's with our tank. And tell me about your temperature gauge. What? How does that thing work exactly? Well, the temperature gauge goes right through the water jacket and into the honey. Uh, we situated it where it's about halfway in the tank. It goes about that far in, so you get a better reading of where it is. So I, 
feel like certain probably all the tanks are similar on their mm -hmm. on that. So I mean, there's no innovation that we've done on that. Um, but I mean, you want to keep your honey. Uh, key is to do it slowly and keep your natural flavor in the honey. So like with our honey, we don't pasteurize or anything like that. You get it in there and we raise it up slowly till it's about 80 to 100 degrees and pour it off and it'll be a natural honey that goes in there and that honey basically make it warm enough to pour. Other people, you can pasteurize it, pasteurize it in there if you want it, and you can burn it in there if you want it, right? So, I mean, you gotta be careful. The thing with the heating element and the, how to learn to use this is, um, it's a slow process. You don't turn it up and check it in 10 minutes and be like, oh, it's not hot enough and crank it, right? That's how you'll burn your whole tank of honey. Very so, good. it's you turn the tank on slowly, and especially, um, a lot of smaller beekeepers might fill up their whole honey crop in that, and it'll sit there, and uh, you know they pour off what they have, and the rest of it they fill it, and then you know three months later when they run out of whatever they poured the first time, they come back, turn it on nice and low, and you know half a day later, a day later, you start pouring off your nice, clean, settled honey. This also doubles as a settler as well. And people. what is a settler? So it's a settler is any kind of. It can be a pail, it can be a settler, like so. Anything that will settle your honey out. Um, so some beekeepers will, you know, because it's, it's you know stainless steel is not cheap, right? So right. to get by, you can use something like this, uncap into it all the way to the top. So you uncap all your honey in it, turn the valve on nice and low, and what happens is all your cappings will float to the top. You have beautiful clean honey underneath. Pour your clean honey off, and then scoop your, your wax out and deal with your wax. So How many gallons of do water does the the? Because it's a a double tank, right? Double tank. So that question is, I uh, I'm not exactly sure about that. I. <laughs> And then, and then you would tell me... It, That's the question I was worried you were going to ask me. Finally, you got me on one. I don't know how much water fits there. <laughs> and, and, but it, it holds about 200 pounds of honey is what you're looking at. So I know about, about the honey that goes in there. Um, yeah. So the um, your tube right here, this is measuring the amount of water. Yeah. And we modified this tube. I mean, uh, there's glass tubes that go on there. We find the glass tube gets broken all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we put a, a tube on there. A lot of people... And besides water, actually, we have beekeepers that put uh, vegetable oil in there, and then you never have to worry about the level. It stays the same, right? So you can't put vegetable oil in there, too. I've never done that, but I've seen it done, so I can't. Well, I've never <laughs> I, done I that either. <laughs> um, and the nice thing with this size tank is it's perfect for when you're doing your, um, you know, single source honey, you know? So if you have a beautiful basswood crop come off, or whatever your local honey is that you know you got to you know, single source flower, it's a really unique honey. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect tank to put that entire harvest in. And we have, uh, actually in our gift shop, which is, uh, we have about six or seven of these that go across, and we'll have like, uh, you know, one will have sunflower. With different Yeah, flavors. one will have sunflower in it, one will have like our hot honey being mixed in it, one will have like, uh, you know, uh, cinnamon honey in it, the whole work. So each little tank's doing, you know, a little unique kind of job for us. So the construction, the actual construction, what gauge of, of stainless are y'all running in there? Uh, 16. 16? Yeah. Very so, good. Yeah, and it's the, uh, 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 uh oh, you got me on the 404. Oh, 304. 304. <laughs> yeah, it's not obviously the highest grade stainless you can buy. So yeah. It's not, uh, you'll see stainless that's got that kind of shiny, it's got a different tint to it. Like chrome. And, and I don't know, yeah, it's not, uh, you don't want that. <laughs> so, so about your, your drip valve, you all manufacture those? We manufacture that as well. Um, and same thing with their, they're called no drip valve, but there's a little bit of a trick to get the temperature nice. Uh, mm -hmm. So sometimes if the temperature is on the cooler side, if you're trying to pour your honey out where it's really cool and it's going slow, obviously when it stops, you're gonna have a little bit of a thing there. So um, I'd say around 80 degrees, 80 to, 80 to 100, anywhere so, in there. It's I know yeah, I valve keep 100%. mine at 100. That's yeah. what I keep, I, yeah. and I keep mine 100 degrees in there. Yeah. You'll never burn it. Yeah. It'll always be ready for you to bottle exactly. at, at the moment's notice. You're yep. ready. So on the bottom plug is your drain for your That's the drain, yeah. For your water? Yeah, and the drain's down there. So if you ever, basically only drain it if you're going to be moving it. <laughs> so if you want to move it around, uh, you drain it. Um, how, and how, what about the evaporation rate? Do you know, uh, are you familiar? Yeah, yeah, that's why some people put the vegetable oil in it. You'll uh -huh. never have it evaporate. But I mean, probably if it's on all the time, you're going to be filling it every couple months. Maybe you'll see it coming down again. And so you uh, use your gauge for yeah, your Yeah, that'll show you. And we keep it right to the top because you want it full. Because this is really the actual level of the water inside exactly. of the so tank. See here, this is where you fill it, so that's an easy port to fill it. It'll also, you know, release the pressure, so you're not going to have a pressure cooker there. Yeah, right. <laughs> so let's the pressure out. Um, what else? Little neat features. Uh, what we about what about lakes? Lakes. Look at our lakes. Actually, we built like a real heavy duty lakes. What we found was um, some people were putting them on pallets, and we had you know the forks would come in. Yeah. We have those heavy heavy duty ones now, so even they takes quite a lot to do any kind of damage to this tank. <laughs> and. Um, as far as, because I know they're probably all like this, 
but the bottom of the tank, is it a flat tank? Is it a, is it elegant? It's, it's right for the front so much. Oh, no, I can't show you. <laughs> we have it full of plugs. Yeah, it's tapered out so that it completely drains. So, yeah. so the bottom of the tank is uh, no, angled? It's, yeah, there's an angle and it drains out. By very a, good, very yeah. good. So, because a, a lot of them actually don't do that. And, and, and I was wondering if that feature was yeah. on, on your tank. Yeah. And for cleaning the tank, that's another thing. So, like, uh, no matter, I mean, if you have really crystal clear honey that's been already settled and you're putting it in there, you'll never really need to clean the inside. It stays clean. But if you're using it um, kind of as a settler, yes. you know, you'll get the you'll see wax rings coming around right. it. And, you know, that's more concerned. To, I like to get that, keep that clean maybe once every month or so. Make sure as soon as it starts to get any kind of build up there, we'll scrape it all out and start I fresh leave again. mine on there. I've seen. I've seen some pretty nasty tanks that are never clean. <laughs> They're like that wide with wax. Right well, no, so I don't get it. Get let it get that bad. Yeah, yeah, no. So we like to keep it clean. And the big tan, we make this right up to. Um, so uh, what I explained, this is the perfect size for a small producer that wants right. to have, you know, that's the, what I'm looking. Those white 18, gold 19? or buckwheat, like you know, have three in a row of yeah. individual mm -hmm. honeys. Um, we built these tanks up to 1,200 pounds, and the, and our size that gets around. We have a, a tank that fills a barrel perfectly. So the, a 500 pound tank's not good because you pump your barrel out and you have you know a foot of honey left in your barrel. So our tank fits a whole barrel. Wow! In it. So your whole barrel goes into the tank. Um, but for those, most hobbyists, this is this is like that's the beautiful ideal hobbyist size. Or like well, I'm not a hobbyist and we use it in our gifts. So what we do in our gift shop is we have a row of seven of them set up with all our cinnamon and everything like that. A wall. Everyone's wearing a white jacket, hairnet, and we have an operation going on with all this beautiful stainless. We have. Easy fill machines on our big tanks, so the large ones. There's an easy fill machine on front that's automatically pouring them with the table going around, uh -huh. and people come to the gift shop and they see all the action going on right there. Uh, from the hot room, we have all stainless steel manifolds coming out to fill all the oh, small wow. little tanks. So wow. yeah, you can get going with a stainless steel. Which, yeah, oh, yeah. You want to have a pretty honey shop? That's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, for for most hobbyists. Even even an investment of, of nineteen hundred dollars, you know, it's it's a serious investment. Uh, it's a serious investment. It holds its values. So yeah, yeah, it really does. Be because the tool, it, it's a tool that that'll last you your whole beekeeping career, yeah. really. Because it's not like this. This is something. The only thing that's really going to ever get changed is your heating element. That's the only thing. Yeah, and you should expect about five. Like yeah. if it's on all the time, they last a long time. Yeah, because we run hours 24 hours a day, and, yeah. and I've changed mine. I've had mine seven, eight years, and I've yeah. changed it twice. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just part of the thing. Now, what about the, the longevity of your drip valve? I mean, because I know a lot of times when it, it'll crystallize inside the throat here, yep. and then your spring gets the crystals on it, and then just, so what Yeah, if, if you over, I mean, if you, you're better off to allow the tank to warm up slowly, and hopefully that'll soften up and come out. Right. If you're in a rush, you grab a blowtorch and you, you know, touch it with a blowtorch, but then what's happening is you can damage the seals inside. So there are, we don't sell them, but I have seen manufactured a nice little... Um, jacket? Yeah, maybe Callan has it. I'm not sure who has, but there's a little jacket you can't get to go over that. That uh -huh. will prevent you from damaging your, when you're in a rush, when, right? When, yeah. yeah, so. So all kinds of neat little things like that. So, Actually, that's our whole lineup right there of what we make. So in that picture there, we have... Yeah. Um, I'll show you right yeah, here. Show us. So that right there would be our, our capping melter. And it's basically our capping melter is a really heavy duty stainless drum where you put all fill your cappings right to the top. It's heated, uh, has a heating band around it. And you melt all your cappings, all the nice honey falls to the bottom. And really this you can do in any kind of drum, but it works beautiful for getting your wax after you, you know, to deal with your cappings. Yeah. And then we make three different sizes of clarifiers up to 60 inches. Um, all of them the same design with the inward flow. Uh, on capping tanks, our capping tanks are all slow, are really bottom beautiful. Slope. Yeah, we should, we brought and the, they're tapered bottoms yeah, as well. Yeah, it's totally tapered. So really beautiful uh, capping tank there, and then up to the, the really large. That's the uh, tank that'll hold full barrels, so you don't have to you know have a little bit left in your barrel. <laughs> so it's the right size, you know, for, for filling a barrel. So yeah, we're really excited with the stainless because uh, it's when you look at all the welding on any of our welding here on the corners. It's all, it's all lazy. beautiful. Once again. Dancing Bee Equipment, I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. And the the, the price here, this is a sh um, show special, show yeah. special price. Yeah. And if, if... Mention the show, we'll do the show special. So yeah. so there you go. If, if you mention the show, you can get that price. And what, what about the shipping costs from Canada to the United States? I mean, what is... Uh, it's always the same as in the U.S. I mean, the more you put on a pile, the more you economize, economize your shipping. Yes. Um, so, I mean, shipping on its own, that, that's not too bad. Uh, I can't give you the exact. I don't... 
you know, the shipping because, cost, to be yeah, honest, but it's, the, but the it's variable, like, yeah, like, how do, where in the U.S.? Is it Michigan, right, right. or is it Texas, or, right. you know, don't tell me it's Alaska. So, <laughs> it, it, it would be the price, eighteen ninety five plus, plus shipping. shipping. Yeah. Right. Or, run, get down to the show here before the end of tomorrow. <laughs> and, and then you can take this nice bottle home with you. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Todd, thank, thank, you thank you very much. very, very much for your time and for explanation. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah, you. God perfect. bless you, brother. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're at the Better Be... Booth here at the expo, and we got John Braff. He's going to be doing the explaining on it's a Lyson bottler, um, and he's going to be telling us all about what Lyson has to offer in the form of bottlers. Now, this bottler that we're going to be showing you right now is not a heated bottler, this is just a regular bottler, but they do sell the, uh, the Lyson's heated bottles. So, so John, if we can go show sure you. Sure thing. This is an unheated 50 liter bottling tank. And this is a pretty cool new product that we have here. It has a conical bottom. So you don't need to tilt this tank when you're all done bottling your honey. Um, the bottom comes down to a point and then this pipe comes out the front here and it has a sanitary fitting on it so you can hook up a bottling valve or it comes with a honey gate and you can just bottle with the honey gate. And it's got a gasket on the top, keeps the ants out. Super nice tank. Uh, 304 acid resistant stainless steel and we have this is a 50 liter but we have all the way up to 200 liter and down to 30 liter and so so most of us talk about in gallons so yeah. what, is, what does that translate out so approximately? 30 liters that's about what is that eight gallons up to about 50 gallons and and so most of what we're talking about um, are 19 gallons of bottles of what we're talking, and, and the ones that we've been talking about are heated so this one is just a regular bottle. So in other words, it doesn't warm the honey that's inside of it or, or anything. Yep. So what is, what is the advantage of or not of having a heated bottle as opposed to just a bottle? So if you are processing raw honey and you have no need to heat it, you can simply fill it up and bottle your honey. Um, no heating required. If you have honey that is crystallized and you need to decrystallize it, that's when you need a heated bottling tank. There's, there's really then no difference between a, a bottle like this one or as like most hobbyists to have a five gallon plastic bottle. Exactly. A bottle, that thing. Yeah. So it's basically a bucket, but it has a, definitely a better pour spout because those spouts on the bucket tank. Yeah. The, so we'll have a lot of people leave one of these set up semi-permanently and they're constantly filling it and, and pouring filling bottles. If you want the heated tank though, we sell the same units just in a heated version. We have a bunch of different sizes, um, different styles. The most popular style is a double wall tank. It's about a two inch thick wall and it's insulated but not water jacketed. And the benefit of not being water jacketed is you don't need to fill it with water, you don't need to worry about it freezing, and you don't have to worry about corrosion or anything to do with water. And how thick is the insulation? Two inches. So this tank sips energy. Once it's up to, up to temperature, it just holds it very little energy. And, it, and it, the heating is all along the inside wall of the tank and along the floor. On the floor as well. On the floor as well. So you can have the tank half full, all the way full. You'll never get burned honey, and it hardly uses any energy. Wow! Wow! So that's and, very popular. But the, it, it isn't water jacket. It's insulated. That's right. It. So right. So that's the difference between that. One. Right. We we also have water jacketed models um, from both Lyson and Maxit. Both are very popular, and those will get a little bit hotter if you really need to get the the honey hot. Um, and they're powerful too, 1,500 or 2,000 watts. So, what what is the um, the price of approximately the 19 gallon heated? Um, and do you have it both in the heated, in the insulated, or um, uh, so, water jacket? So we've got the water jacketed. We've got the the non jacketed version. Um, I think the non water jacketed. 18 gallon would probably be about $1,200 if I remember correctly. And and are you all offering show prices? So 
our pricing here at the show is, is our standard pricing. Okay. Um, but if you want to order right now, we do have a deal going on for participants in the expo. You can so order. So our discount. video, our video is going to be posted like in two weeks. Okay. Would they still be able to take advantage of that? Not in two weeks. The special will be over. Okay. Then. All right. That's why I want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's it's around twelve hundred dollars for a jacketed or for and the. I, I can I can look those up. Yeah, please. Yeah, we have an eighteen gallon. Actually, I was too high, so it's about eleven hundred for the non-jacketed. But that's the insulated. It's actually by chance the exact same price. Wow. Water jacketed eighteen gallon is eleven hundred, and the heated insulated non-jacketed is also eleven hundred. What gauge three hundred four is is that? That's a good question. Um, I am not certain. It's probably 22 or 24 gauge. That's what I, I, 23 is what I was really thinking yeah. about. It, yeah. It was. All right. So, so we got a, a slanted bottom. Uh, you can either use a regular gate or a dripless gate. And so, depending on what what type of gate you're going to put on it, that would then determine that there's a price fluctuation in that. So the it always comes with this um, sanitary Nickel. coupling. Right. If you want to add the bottling valve, that's two sixty nine ninety five for the bottling valve. So does the regular gate that comes with that it? That comes with it. So yep. the drip valve is going to be an extra. That'll be an add on. Yep. And how much was that? Two sixty nine ninety five. Okay. And um, what about shipping on, on these? Shipping on a small tank like this is by FedEx or UPS, and so that's. And it's be, de determined on yeah, where you live. Thirty dollars or so. so it's it's eleven hundred dollars with just a regular valve yep. gate, um, and then that's either jacketed or insulated. Yeah, those, and those water jacketed tanks those do ship freight. They ship freight? Yeah, freight. Oh, okay, okay. Truck. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the difference between free and freight. Huh? Yeah, big difference. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I think that's uh, that should wrap it up, huh? We have that non-water jacketed tank up to 100 liters, so that is uh, about 25 gallons. So, so what is the price on, on the 100 liter? The 100 liter... Because you, you said the, the, yeah. the 19 was 1,100. That 26 gallon is uh, 1,375. So it's another 270 dollars. Yeah. yeah. John, thank you very much for your time Thanks and for, for explaining by. what we're doing. And so this is the licensed bottler, whether it's, it's, this one is not a heated one, it's just a bottler, but they offer the heated, whether, whether it be insulated or water jacket, and those prices are $1,100 for a 19, 90 gallon plus ship. Is that correct? Yeah. All right, so we're going to be moving on. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, so now, hey, Charlie, take that camera and zoom up this and let everybody know where we are. This is so we don't get lost. <laughs> we're at Hilco. That's the biggest display here at the expo. Oh my gosh. And with us, we got the man himself, John Hill, <laughs> president, CEO, oh, head boy. bottle washer, <laughs> That's right. family man. Trash and, man. And, and look, yeah. he, this this is the man right here. <laughs> and so we, we pulled John away from, I mean, the customers out here. This is oh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Quite a place, quite an operation, quite an expo here. And as you can see, they sell a lot of stuff, but we're focusing in on the bottlers because that's what the video is going to be on about the bottlers. Yep. So, John, I want you to tell us uh, about just basically about the bottler, and then yep. I'm gonna I got some questions that oh, I'll boy. ask you. Oh boy! Okay, make them easy. Oh so. no, I won't be. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So we uh, heated bottling tanks are one of the most popular products. Uh, double old water jacketed tank is the best way to heat honey, decrystallize your honey for bottling honey, fantastic product. You know, it warms the honey. You got hot water, we got a thousand watt heating element in this bottle, but it warms the, warms the water up below and surrounds the honey with a nice warm blanket of water. Can I ask you, yeah. Yeah. so I'm, I'm looking at your 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 warmer, mm -hmm. the heater right here. Yeah. 
And it, does this give a LED? Yeah, actually, we probably should have painted on this model, on this version here, it's actually lit up. This is our seven gallon model, basically the same design. But you can see how the display works here. So it's a PID controller. This model, is seven gallon model, has a 500 watt element. We also have a 19 gallon model. Um, and those two, those at the 32 volt have a thousand watt element. But yeah, you have a PID controller, keeps a very precise temperature rating. It, people have been switching around here. Usually it runs within one or two degrees of what you set it as. Probably somebody's been moving around here. But yeah, you just have an up and down button here, up and down arrow, all you gotta do to set it. It's a range, we have it set for a range of between 50 and 200 degrees. So the folks that are doing some wax melting once in a while or maple syrup, maybe we wanna run a little bit of hotter temperatures. And so we allow that, you know, just moving that button up and down. But simple on off switch, very simple operation. But again, a water jacket, you just put water in, the heating element heats the water, it warms that honey, provides a nice even blanket, a nice even heat all around the honey. So just fantastic design. But again, fairly common design, a water jacket like this. But uh, they come in our dripless bottling valve. We do so wait, let's yeah. talk about yeah. your dripless bottle. Yeah. So you all manufacture this. We manufacture this ourselves in your, in your 3D printing. Well, well, yeah, and so so this 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 bottle actually I came up with, came up with the idea for a home built uh, uh, dripless bottling valve on our way back from Hive Life 2023, and my father in law and I, who's, who helps with a lot of design stuff, we were talking about um, what we can do, you know, to, to make a, a less expensive dripless bottling valve. A lot of our competitors have a dripless valve; it's 150, 200, even 250 dollars, all stainless steel bottling valve. And so we're like, what can we do to make that more affordable? And so we do a lot of 3D printing. We mess around a lot of different 3D printing stuff, and we thought, can we make a 3D print a fully 3D printed dripless valve. And we tried that, and uh, we had some prototypes. I didn't really like the look of it or the function. We struggled a little bit. We ended up using a stainless steel pipe tee, which is what some other competitors make it out of. Uh, and then a stainless steel. This is stainless steel, 304 stainless steel. And originally we were 3D printing all the other parts. And eventually we started going to a stainless steel plunger. And now these parts are all made from food grade nylon, machined from nylon. They're not 3D printed, they're machined from food grade nylon. Oh. And then the also the only parts on this valve anymore that are 3D printed are the handle itself and this this pivot piece here. So, so not, the none spring of the, is a stainless steel. The spring, spring is stainless steel. Yep, you can see it inside there. Yep, we source those in three or four foot sections and cut them down. You know, to, to length, and we we buy the O-rings, source them in America here, and so anyway, so yeah, we build these in house. It's been a fantastic product for us. It's really taken off. We sold probably 700 of them wow. in the past year or so, and then in addition to selling them individually, we also make them standard on our seven-gallon uh, bottling tank, and then we all we have that we do a fully stainless one that we don't build in house uh, on our larger models. So now on the 19 gallon, the 19 and the 32 have the uh, the 19 also has that same the stainless steel yep. on. It. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, but but a dripless valve in general, I mean, either one works really, really good. Again, all food grade components. They just are really slick. For I mean, and again, a lot of competitors use to use some form of dripless valve too. But it's just clean, shut off, very precise filling, very easy to operate, just super user friendly. So I noticed that you have a plug for at your drain filler. Your filler right here. This is here? our fill port. Yep. Yep. And just so, a, so does this like? Um, Slow down the evaporation, or yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's just but a it's breather. Still gonna, yeah, still it'll gonna. evaporate a little bit. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're using water. Obviously, we recommend, uh, on, you know, ideally in a perfect situation, use mineral oil in your bottling tanks uh, because it never evaporates. And unlike maybe vegetable oil, some people use vegetable oil um, and that can go rancid over time. So mineral oil will not evaporate or go rancid. Uh -huh. um, however, See that? Most you learn people, things on this channel. There you go. <laughs> but it's also more expensive. Um, so water, obviously, the cheapest and simplest. I don't recommend distilled water, though, because distilled water can, can it acts as a magnet for minerals. Um, and so your, you know, your magnesium, your nickel is what causes the stainless, you know, makes, makes it into stainless steel. And that can, that can leach that out over time. And and so we recommend just purified drinking water you buy at the store. So anyway, but yeah, you just pour it in here and then we use this breather cap. Partially just cleans the cleans up the look of it instead of having an open port there. And we're switching that design in the future on some of these other ones too. doesn't have more of a, a spout. We're switching this design going forward. Um, and then you have a drain. I'll turn it off the camera here. We have a drain drain valve here for draining water out. If you're storing it or moving it or worry about freezing, you can drain it out. Um, temperature gauge here, but also your, your controller also shows the temperature. So back to the controller here, we have the 100, the green number is your set number, and then the, the, the top number, the big number, is your actual temp, and that's the temp right here inside this element. That's not necessarily going to be your honey temp because the honey's in the middle here and it's going to take more time for that to heat up, but that's just showing the temperature at the thermal coupler, which is right inside the heating element there. So, so let, let me ask you about yeah. the construction yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. So tell me about where it's made and how it's assembled and that stuff. Yeah, we haven't we have made our specs in China. 
And, yep. and, and, and what, what type material are, are you using? Type 304, food grade stainless steel, 21 gauge. And so they manufacture in China, and then it, it, when it comes to, to you, yeah. at, what point, at that point, what do you all do? Yeah, we clean them up, we leak test them, we build the heating elements in-house. These here we make ourselves. Um, some of the components are also going from overseas just like anybody's would, but uh, we actually 3D print these boxes ourselves, and we, build, we wire them up, we build the controllers, we buy the heating elements separate, all that stuff, thermal a couple of last stuff come separate. So we're building the heating systems in-house ourselves, and then we install them in the tanks. We leak test every single tank, pressure test, before boxing them and shipping it out. So we're doing a lot to them. You know, we're having the main construction done overseas. We're doing an awful lot to them here. And again, they've been hugely successful for us. Um, we've learned a lot. A couple years ago, we launched a tank that uh, gave us some trouble. Uh, we got some flack, you may have heard, yeah. but uh, but we've, we've gotten over that. And no, we've moved learned on. a lot. We've moved on. We've learned a lot. Um, again, we leak test every one now. We've we've switched manufacturers uh, a couple years ago, and we've been so we've sold several hundred of these different uh, between the three different sizes. So we've what sold, are the three sizes? We have a seven gallon, a nineteen gallon, and a thirty two gallon. Yep. And and on on this one, yep. on the. On the uh, the 32 gallon and on this one, your observation port right here. Yeah. The, these are is this glass inside? It's a glass. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's a nice and well protected. Some of our competitors put a big old honky couple of valves out here to build glass too. It's like you don't you don't even need that. So we just put a simple we just put a simple sight glass. And frankly when you just when you just fill it up to the bottom of the fill spot that's, that's good enough. That's yeah because I know that most of them will give you a, a long length of yeah. it. Um, so you can say whether your water is at this level. It, yeah. So so you you all decide we're gonna go with a shorter. Yeah. What's the point? We yeah. have a big old long thing. That's yeah. So number. so when you get when you get below here, you better put some in it. Yeah, that's, right. that's, that's, right. that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you don't need to know. Yeah, you don't need it way down there. Yeah, yeah. And we, try to, we try to simplify things a little bit. Very good. And the, now there's only one thing you haven't talked about. Yeah. What, tell me about your warranty. Oh, we love to talk about our warranties. <laughs> yes. All of our tanks carry a three-year warranty on every single component. No matter if it's an O-ring or a sight glass or a heater controller, every single piece of this thing comes for three years. We call our no-hassle warranty. Uh, we don't give you a bunch of fine print or red tape or a bunch of hassle about it. If you got a problem, you call us up, you email us, we will take care of you. Here we are, folks. This this is Hilco and and... I'm going to put the description of this, well, it won't be this um, uh, uh, warm right here. I'm going to use, we're going to go for the 19 uh, gallon version. But, so, another thing we have to talk about price. Yeah. What is what is the price for um, the 19 gallon? Yeah, the 19 gallon normal price uh, as of 2024 here is uh, $9.50, $9.49. That's shipped price, shipped to your door anywhere in the 48 states. So, shipping is included in that? Uh, everything over 100 bucks with us is shipped free. We don't make exceptions. 100 bucks free shipping. Man, that that's awesome. So, yeah. let's see. So, we did shipping. We did just about all the questions I had about your tank, uh, warranty, and uh, I, I guess that's really about everything we got, John. I'm what's, so, what's not to like, guys? I mean, plain and simple, right, Jeff? I, I, mean, I know, and, and so like, if, if look, we got even world famous Mike Barry oh has, has got himself. What, don't you have one of these bottlers? No, you got not a yet. Maxon. No, yeah. So, but you have their extract. I have the 18, uh, 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 18 frame Ultra Max, which right. is so, absolutely. I had to pull out my Max. I didn't have to. I pulled out my Maxon for a small load. I said, well, I don't want to get the big one dirty and get all the buckets out. And when I tell you, I'm not kidding you. And I think I texted you. I even put a not so nice post on my Facebook to get the honey out of that Maxon. That little. That little thing was so much harder to clean. It's so much more trouble. It had two and a half plus inches of honey in the bottom. I had to tip it up for a day to get it out. Just, just saying, it is by far yours are more superior in their design, in their running a bit, how they run, how smooth they run, far superior. And, and I do want to ask. Uh, and you're gonna pay him later. Yeah, right? yeah. Later, yeah right. so, <laughs> steak, <laughs> steak supper tonight, Mike. Good. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the bottom of the tank. Yes, flat. I'm glad Mike yeah, mentioned no, that. No, no. Um, yes, because uh, no, all three sides of our bottling tanks slope floors. Okay, so the back of the tank is about an inch or so above the front, so it slopes towards the bottom. You actually, in fact, I don't know. You don't have a. I guess on your tripod. Can you take that loose or not? Okay. So just like our Max Series honey extractors, uh, the bottom. 
of the tank for slopes towards the front, so you got a cone center, but also the back, the back of the tank is higher than the front, so that honey slopes towards the bottom. As you can see, you got a little trough in there. It's a fully welded, unobstructed fitting, so you get the best drain, the absolute best draining tank in the industry by far, no question. Along with that best warranty. Along with that best warranty. I mean, as I said, what's not to like, Jeff? I mean, plain and simple, right? So, John. Thank you very much Thanks, for your Jeff. time. Always a pleasure. I mean, you got you got a crowd of people standing in, and most of them are to see Good Time Charlie Records. Yeah, that's all right, absolutely. But, Mike, Mike Barry, yeah. But you know, so as we leave, you'll probably lose a couple of these yeah, people. But, yeah, but yeah. you know, thank you so much, Thanks John. Again, I do appreciate it. Likewise, God bless, brother. You too. You too. Thanks. Turn your camera a little bit this way. Yeah, to get a little, a little bit, bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit. You got a little it. Bit, a little bit. A little bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go, right there. That's good. Oh, will you be good right here? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. All right, and just got to scoot over a little bit to, to show it. Got it. Got it. Okay. We're good. Everybody looks good. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. Now, after, now, now we can finish the video. What are you holding up, Charlie? Did you steal that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so there it is. We did a... Uh, we, we actually tried to get two, three other one, three other vendors, but they're working one or two people in their in their uh, booth, and it just there's so many people inside of there. Ralph couldn't keep the crowd back enough. It was very busy. Yeah, it, it, it was really buff. So at least we gave you a few of them in there. But um, I always think that a, a honey bottle warmer is just an essential tool. For even hobbyist beekeepers, you know, um, and when we were in there, Charlie, what happened when we were in there? What'd you do? I got roped into buying a honey warmer. <laughs> he didn't get roped in. He, yeah, he, 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 he was saying, man, I think I might get me one of them. And so Charlie's going home with one of them. I'm yeah. not going to tell you which one because I don't want to. to uh, and, look, and look, no one tell my wife. This is all. This is just between the, us. <laughs> you know. So yeah, I, hope, I hope some of that information might be uh, helpful to you all. And I think that's that's all I got to say on this one, Charles. I think, it, I th I think yes. we did a pretty good job. It was a great show and all that. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Ed. Good. No, good time. Good time, that's, Charlie. That's good time. Record row. <laughs> yeah. So we can do that again. That's, that's me. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless. No, we can. We, that's how we do it. How we yes. do it? You do it. Start it. All right. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. And we'll be making more. God bless. It's Mr. Ed, Wreck-It Ralph, and Good Time Charlie. And we're out of here until the next video. God bless God everybody. Bless.